in the previous lecture, we were doing some uh, convolution. So convolution theorem, if the functions fx and gx are piecewise continuous from zero to common infinity, then convolution of f and g denoted by f star g is given by f star g is equal to zero to t f of x g t minus x dx, right? And this is convolution. And if f t and g t are piecewise continuous from zero common infinity and are of exponential order, given that Laplace transform of f t is capital F s and Laplace transform of g t is capital G s, then the Laplace transform of convolution is simply f s into g f s. Okay, so now uh, let us try to prove it. Okay, let us try to prove it. Uh, how to go about it? So let me write. So let me write that my Laplace transform of f of z. Okay, I'll take different variables so that is e to power minus s z f z d z. And this is equal to zero to infinity. Okay. And Laplace transform of let us take some different variable. Let's say x. It will be equals to zero to infinity e to power minus s x g of x dx. Okay. Now I want to uh, write. I want to write what would be the Laplace. Uh, what is the product of f s into g of s? So my product of f s into g of s will be equal to what? It will be equals to uh, integration from zero to infinity, e to power minus s z f z d z into integration from zero to infinity, e to power minus s x g of x dx. Okay, so f s into g of s would be simply e to power minus s z f z d z integration from zero to infinity e to power minus s x g x d x. Okay, I hope it is clear. Now, um, let me try to use uh, change of order of integration also. But let me first write 0 to infinity. This will be fz dz, and this will be integration from 0 to infinity e to power minus s x plus z g of x t of x. Okay, so g of x into t of x. So this is what it is. And what I'll do, I'll use uh, because see here it was sz now, so this depends on z. Here it is on if it depends on x only. So simply e to power minus s z. I can push it in this like this double integral. I can put this particular s z here. And now I'll use the change of variables. Change of variables. So I'll use that my x plus z is simply t. And if my x plus z is simply t or dx will be simply e t. And uh, uh, this will be I think. Uh, this line will be, I think, uh, see, this is your t, this is your z. So you see from, uh, if, if I write x plus z as t, so your t varies from, t varies from z to infinity, right? Because see, your uh, limits are on x, so your x is equal to zero, then the t is equal to z. And if x is equal to infinity, then t is equal to infinity. So your t varies from z to infinity, right? Your t varies from, z to infinity. So instead of using this horizontal strip, what I will use, I will use the vertical strip. Instead of using the horizontal strip, I will use the vertical strip. So the vertical strip varies from z equal to 0 to z equal to t. So a vertical strip varies from z equal to 0 to z equal to so if it, it is that the case, then I think this integration, I should write 0 to infinity, f z dz. And uh, this particular integration, I should write right now, uh, z varies from where to where? It varies from 0 to t e to the power minus st. And what it will be? What is x? I think x is t minus z. And what is uh, dx? dx is simply dt. Is that clear? Oh. 
Okay, okay, okay. Just give me a minute. Okay, I got the point. I got the point. Take it. Okay, so instead of writing this, I will write this. So uh, instead of writing this, so for example, what I have done, uh, I'm trying to find the uh, Laplace transform of capital FS into GS, and Laplace transform of capital FS is e to power minus SZ FZ DZ, and Laplace transform of GS is e to power minus SX GX. Instead of writing this way, I'll write this way so that you don't get confused. No? So it's going to step each order. So this will be equal to what? It will be equal to zero to infinity. And zero to infinity, it is what? It is equal to e to power minus s x plus z g x. Uh, and then you have uh, then you have this thing f z. And then you have this d x and then d z. What I want to say is that first you have to integrate with respect to x and then we have to integrate with respect to z. So first x and then z. Now what I'm going to do? I am going to change the order of integration. See what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the order of integration. So from here, this particular integration I'm talking about, referring about right now. This particular integration I'm referring about. So this particular integration I'm referring about at first. So here, if I replace my x plus z as t, so dx would become dt because the change, because I'm I'm trying to change the order of integration. So I'm first trying to use this particular integration where I'm integrating with respect to x. So the variable of integration is x and this z would behave as a constant for it. So your x plus z is equal to t. So what it means that if your z was equal to 0, your x was equal to 0, then your z was equal to, then your t was equal to z. See, x plus z ko apne kya liya? t liya. Now if, if x is 0, then your t is z and if your x is infinity, then t is infinity. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the order of integration in the sense that uh, so what I want to do is that so this is like zero to infinity and uh, this is simply fz dz and this integration I have what I have here I have x plus z so this is e to power st so gx kya ho jayega? gx simply ho jayega, I think t minus of z Achha. x zub 0 tha uh, z zub x zub 0 tha to t kya tha z jab uh, x 0 tha that is this then t was z Hena? and when when x is equal to infinity then t was infinity is that clear? Uh, Alpha is that clear or not clear? Okay. Okay, good enough. Chalo ji. So, the match of Sandani Kushish Karam will give that I want to derive this uh, convolution theorem. And I will change the order of integration, but first let us write it in the elegant manner. So, this is the most elegant thing that I have written. So, what I'll do, I'll change my order of integration. I'll change my order of integration. So, see, here z, here t varies from what? Here, uh, here your t varies from, okay, so your t varies from z to infinity, right? So your t varies from z to infinity. So you are integrating on the horizontal strip. Instead of integrating on the horizontal strip, I will integrate on the vertical strip. So vertical strip is what? I have to integrate it from uh, z equal to 0 to z equal to infinity. I have to integrate it from z equal to 0 to z equal to infinity. So what I'll do, so first let us, let me write this is, uh, so here you are integrating with respect to t and then you are integrating with respect to z. Now I will integrate with respect to z and then I will integrate with respect to t. Is that clear? So I'm changing the order of integration. If I want to change the order of integration, see here fz is fine. So I'll write fz here. That is absolutely fine. And this particular thing, this particular thing, was but getting integrated with respect to t. Now I'm going to integrate it with respect to z, with respect to z. Okay. Now I'm going to integrate with respect to z first and then with respect to t. 
Is that clear or not clear? Now see. Now here you see. If I want to change the order of integration, now Z varies from 0 to T. Z varies from 0 to T. Is that clear or not clear at all? See, what I want to say is that I want to integrate with respect to Z first and then T. So I'm going to change the order of integration. Okay, I'm going to change the order of integration. So now here, if I want to change the order of integration, your T was varying from Z to infinity. Now, instead of integrating with respect to T, I will be integrating with respect to Z first. So DZ comes here, DT is outside. So I have to change this order of integration. So the limits will also be getting changed. So your Z varies from zero to T, G of T minus Z, EZ, and there would be E key power minus ST also. Somewhere I have to write E key power minus ST. So I'm integrating with respect to Z now. So Z ke respect to integrate karo ko kya hai Z varies from 0 to T. 0 to T. So what you are getting? You are getting that this is equal to writing 0 to infinity integration 0 to T E key power minus ST FZ GT minus Z DZ and then you have to integrate with respect to T also. Is that clear? And here you can also write in one more step another thing. See here, this uh, this particular term depends upon t. It does not depend upon z. So I can again take it out. So it is equal to zero to infinity e key power minus st integration from zero to t f z g of t minus z dz and is pure ka dt. So thoda dhyan se dekho. What does it represent? It represents the Laplace transform of this particular function, isn't it? So this is nothing but Laplace transform of this particular integration. And what is this? This is nothing but the convolution of f into g. So what you got? You got that your f s into g of s is simply the Laplace transform of the convolution of f and g. This is how you define your convolution. Integration from 0 to t, f z g t minus z dz. I hope it is clear now. At least now it is clear. So what I have done, I have changed the order of integrations. So initially, we were trying to integrate on C. First thing that let us again uh, revisit this. So Laplace transform of fz is given by e power minus s z f z dz. Laplace transform of g of x is given by 0 to infinity e power minus s x g x dx. Now I want to find Laplace. Uh, now I'm trying to find this product f s into g of s. So f s into g of s would be 0 to infinity e power minus s z f z dz and 0 to infinity e power minus sx gx dx. And why did I choose two different variables? Otherwise, it will become a square of it. So now it will be a double integral and double integral 0 to infinity fz dz. And what I have done uh, when I'm uh, double integrating it, let us first write in uh, in a certain fashion. So what I have written, I have uh, taken e power minus sz in this particular uh, bracket because you see we are integrating with respect to x only here. So when I chose to write x plus z as t, so what did I get? I get e key power minus st gt minus z dt fz dz. So first I'm integrating with respect to t and then I'm integrating with respect to z. So if I was integrating with respect to t, my limits were going from z to infinity. Now instead of that, I want to integrate with respect to z first. So if I want to integrate with respect to z, my fz is a function of z and all of these things, e key power minus st fz t, gt minus z, so what is happening that uh, this particular integration, which is going on uh, with respect to t first, I want to integrate with respect to z first, so I have to change my limits accordingly. So if I change my limits accordingly, my dz would be having uh, the limits of z. So z is varying from 0 to t. Okay, z is varying from 0 to t and t is varying from 0 to infinity, isn't it? So dekho, yahan pe dekho. Pehle kya tha? t was varying from z to infinity. And Z was varying from 0 to infinity. So they could do the Aapko ye triangle ka, ye aapko yala as do, do se chize boli sakti hai. So your pali ye tha, ye tha. Your Z was varying from 0 to infinity. Where was Z? Z was your y axis. And your T was varying from Z to infinity. So basically yala region. Okay? Because T is varying from T is varying from Z to infinity and your z is varying from 0 to infinity. So obviously, a poor reason. So first, you were integrating with respect to this and then you were integrating 
on the vertical scale. Now what I'm doing, now I'm doing what? I'm trying to integrate first with respect to Z. So your Z varies from zero to T. And then I will say that my Z with T varies from zero to infinity. So again, the area of integration is same only. So it is not going to matter. So we can change the order of integration. So, and if I want to change the order of integration, then uh, instead of D, uh, dt dz, I will write dz, but I have to change the limit accordingly. So your t varies from zero to infinity, your z varies from zero to t. And if your z varies from zero to t, so what it will be, it will be e keeper minus st, fz, d, c, t minus z, dz, dt. This particular term, this particular term, look at this, this particular term is nothing, but it is equal to the convolution of f and g. See here, it is integrating with respect to z. Now that you can place this outside. So you can take it outside because uh, e key power minus st, this is this depends on t. It does not depend on z. So I've taken e key power minus st outside. And what is this? This is equals to convolution of f and g. I hope it is clear now. So this, this theorem is an important theorem, uh, usually uh, for mathematics people, but I've taught you some more. Now, if you want to keep that in mind, good enough, even if you don't want to, but at least keep the result in mind. Okay, now try to find me this integration. Now try to find me integration lab, uh, integration lab plus transform of integration from z to t e key power minus 2z cos t minus z dz. If you want to find this, so clearly it is an easy question. I told you that the convolution is given by this. And it is equals to what Laplace transform of this convolution is simply capital FS into capital GS. And what is capital FS? Capital FS is Laplace transform of F. What is capital GS? It is Laplace transform of G. So what will happen? Laplace transform of e key power minus 2z is simply 1 upon s plus 2. And what is Laplace transform of cos t? It is equals to 1 upon, uh, sorry, s upon s square plus. I hope it is clear. Okay, so this is called as uh, this is called as a uh, deconvolution, uh, deconvolution, the convolution. Okay, uh, good enough. So uh, here we come to the end of almost each of these things, but now we have to move forward and do a few more things, uh, few more questions also, so that uh, this chapter goes on to the completion. There is something called as error function, and this is this is something that we are going to study in more detail, probably in. Uh, experimental uh, analysis, uh, error analysis in the experimental physics. So right now I'm just giving you something called as error function. What is error function? It is quite useful in, uh, you can say, uh, statistics. Useful in statistical application. Okay. And error function in general is defined by this. ERFT, this is called as error function at, as a function of t, is defined as 2 upon root over pi integration from 0 to t e key power minus of z square dz. So this is your error function. I know that as t tends to infinity, this error function would be equal to what? 2 upon root over pi and this will be root to 0 to infinity e key power minus z square dz. And this, you know, this is equal to root over pi upon 2. So this will be equal to 1. So if you remember that uh, e key power minus of x square dx from minus infinity to plus infinity gives you a gamma half. And what is gamma half? It is equal to root over. So 0 to infinity, you can place a 2 here. Uh, sorry. Uh, are you getting my point? So if you want to write this, so I know that uh, two times integration from zero to infinity, e key power minus x squared dx would be equals to minus infinity to plus infinity, e key power minus x squared dx, and then you can, is that clear? I think this is quite easy to see. Good. So uh, I know now this is one property that the error function ki limiting value kitni aati, one aati. Second, if I, another function that I want to define is called as complementary of the error function. What is complementary of error function? This is 1 minus 
error function. So what is complementary error function? So I define it as a error function complementary as a function of t is nothing but it is one minus error function as a function of t. And it would be equals to one minus of this thing, uh, one my uh, sorry, uh, one minus of E R F T, or in other words, I will write uh, Okay. okay, and what is one? One I'll write zero to infinity, two upon root over pi. Uh, e to the power minus z square dz, and this is minus two upon root over pi, zero to t, and this is I think e to the power minus z square dz, right? So your complementary error function, so your complementary error function as a function of t is given by two upon root over pi, and this is integration from t to infinity. E to power minus z square dz. So this is complementary of error function. Is that clear? See, zero to infinity, you have subtract zero to t, you will get t to infinity. So two things you have to remember. This is one that is error function is given by this, and complementary of error function is given by this. Is that fine? And if I now want you to find what would be the Laplace transform of your error function. What will be the Laplace transform of your error function? So what it would be? It would be equal to writing Laplace transform of root over two upon pi, and this is, uh, I think, uh, integration from zero to t e to power minus z square dz. Okay, and I think uh, I told you that whenever we have to find if the theorem as in that is Laplace transform of your um, integration from zero to t, kya tha ye? F t, f tau d tau. This was equal to what? This was equal to capital F s upon s. And what is capital F s? Capital F s is simply the Laplace transform of your f t. This was the first theorem, probably or second that we studied today. Okay. Now, if I want to write the Laplace transform of this particular function, this will be equal to two upon root over pi. 1 upon s and fs means Laplace transform of e to power minus of z square, right? fs upon s. So fs is Laplace transform of e to power minus z square. This is how it would be. And uh, so I'll write it as this way 2 upon root over pi, 1 upon s, Laplace transform of e to power minus z square. So Laplace transform of e to power minus z square is, I think, integration from 0 to infinity, e to power minus sz, e to power minus z square d. Uh, z and uh, then I should write that would be equal to 2 upon root over pi 1 upon s and then I can do one trick that I'll do it uh, I'll write it as s plus z by 2 the whole square and then I will multiply with e to power of uh, this will give you minus not a comfort then bahar multiply with the e to power s square upon 4 z and then this will be dz. Because see, it, it, it will give you s square, uh, 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 z plus s square, sorry, my mistake, z plus s square. So it will give you z square, it will give you s square by 4 in negative. So I've written here, and it will also give you the middle term that is minus s. I hope it is clear. And uh, what we are finding, just don't forget, we are finding the Laplace transform of your error function as a function of t. Okay, so your Laplace transform is 2 upon root over pi, and then you have 1 over s, then you have e to power s square upon 4, and then this integration. Remember this integration, how would you do? Uh, you just place uh, z plus s by 2 as some x, and then your dz will become dx, and this in, this will become s by 2 to infinity. This is e to power minus x square, and what is this will be dx. Okay, and what I will do is, I will try to write it in this fashion that we'll be able to get what I want to say. So I'll write it as 2 upon root over pi, and then s by 2 to infinity, and you have this e to power minus x square dx, and this entire term I write in one, one step. So you remember, if you remember, what was your complementary error function? It was 2 upon root pi, integration from t to infinity e to power minus z square. So this particular term, would become complementary error function. So your Laplace transform to your error function 
is nothing but it is equal to 1 upon s e to the power s square upon 2 uh, error function complementary s upon i hope it is clear because here it is s upon that's right i hope it is clear okay so uh, this is one now uh, uh, what should I do? So, a company of thought. Try to find uh, the Laplace transform of error function of root over t. Try to find the Laplace transform of error function of root over t. So, it is equals to Laplace transform of uh, 2 upon root over pi integration from 0 to, I think, instead of t, I'll write root t here, e to power minus z square dz. And from here, what I'll do, I'll simply place my z square equal to x. I'll simply place my z square equal to x. Which I'll, pencil square to I'll simply place my z square equal to x. So this is equal to uh, Laplace transform of 2 upon root over pi, uh, integration e to the power uh, minus of x. And what would be dx? dx would be simply, see, uh, z ke jayega, root over x. So your dz would be equal to 1 upon. 2 root over x uh, dx. So I'll write instead of dx, I'll write 1 upon 2. So this will become 1. And this will become e to power minus x to power half. And this is dx. And the limit, when z was 0, this would be 0. And when z was root over t, so x will be equal to what t. Okay. Again, Laplace transform of integration from 0 to t, f tau, d tau is equal to what? It is equal to capital Fs divided by s. If I want to do that, what I will get? So I'll get 1 upon root over pi. It is Laplace transform of this, and which is equal to what? It is equal to 1 upon s. And this is Laplace transform of e to the power, uh, e to the power minus t and t to the power minus of. Okay, and what it would be? So here I'm writing h is a problem. So it is equal to zero to infinity e to power minus s t. So this is minus s plus one t t minus half t t. What it is equal to? This is nothing but it is equal to Laplace transform of e to power minus t t to power minus half such that your s is replaced by s plus one. So all you need to do is you need to find this Laplace transform. You need to find the Laplace transform and then replace. So one needs to find the Laplace transform here. Uh, Laplace transform of, sorry, Laplace, what is this? T ki power minus S plus 1 T, right? So, T ki power minus half ka Laplace transform, kya hoga? T ki power minus half ka Laplace transform, hoga? E ki power minus ST, T ki power minus half DT from 0 to infinity. Is ki jage kya hoga? E ki power minus S plus 1 so you just find the Laplace transform of t to power minus half and replace s by s plus one. Is that clear? Okay. So this would be equal to one upon root over pi, one upon s. And this is, what is the Laplace transform of t to power minus half? The Laplace transform of t to power minus half is simply, uh, so it is equals to gamma half upon root over s. So it will be gamma half, which is equal to root over s. And instead of s, you have to write s plus 1. So you have to replace s by s plus 1. Why you have to replace s by s plus 1? Remember, Laplace transform of e to power minus t, t to power minus half is equal to 0 to infinity e to power minus s plus 1 t. So you should into t to power minus half dt. So Laplace transform of t to power minus half kya hota? e to power minus s t, t to power minus half dt. Instead of s, you have this s plus 1. So what you do, just find the Laplace transform of t to power minus half, replace s by s plus 1. So what you will get, you will get root over s plus 1 as well. So I think it is quite clear. The answer would be 1 upon s into root over s plus 1. So this is your error function of root over, uh, sorry, this is the Laplace transform of error function of root over t. Is that clear or not clear?
ओके ठीक है अगेन रिमेम्बर दैट एरर फंक्शन ऑफ रूट ओवर टी इज इक्वल टू लैपलेस फंक्शन लैपलेस फंक्शन ऑफ एरर फंक्शन ऑफ रूट ओवर टी इज इक्वल टू लैपलेस ऑफ टू टू अपॉन रूट ओवर पाई जीरो टू रूट ओवर टी ई की पार माइनस एट स्क्वायर डी जेड एरर फंक्शन ऑफ रूट ओवर टी क्या हो जाएगा जीरो टू रूट ओवर टी ई की पार माइनस एट स्क्वायर डी जेड अब यहाँ पे क्या किया जस्ट एक जेड स्क्वायर इक्वल टू एक्स इफ यू टेक जेड स्क्वायर इक्वल टू एक्स इट विल बी की पार माइनस एक्स इंस्टेड of dz i will write x ki power minus of d dx this is from the uh, substitution now you see this would be what again remember i have given you this property laplace transform of 0 to t f tau d tau is equal to fs upon s so laplace transform of 0 to t e ki power minus x x ki power minus of dx would be simply 1 upon s laplace transform of this particular term ft ka laplace transform is that the answer is So what I have written, I have written one upon s Laplace transform of e to power minus t, t to power minus r. Now what would be the Laplace transform of e to power minus t, t to power minus r? It would be equals to zero to infinity e to power minus s t into e to power minus t into t to power minus r d t. This is the Laplace transform of e to power minus t, t to power minus r. Look, Laplace transform of function what is it? It is equal to zero to infinity e to power minus s t f t. And instead of f t now you have this e to power minus t t to power minus r so it will become e to power minus s plus one t t to power minus r t. Now if if you have this kind of thing now instead of this if only s was there then what it was it was simply f of s it was simply f of s right Laplace transform of t to power minus r a yoga. Now instead of this, you have now s plus one. So what it will become? It will become the Laplace transform of t to the power minus half, where s is replaced by s plus one. So instead of s, now you have s plus one. So this particular thing would correspond to the Laplace transform of t to the power minus half, such that s is replaced by s plus one. Remember, I have derived the formula for t to the power n. Where n was natural number, so it was n factorial upon s to the power n plus one. Now, instead, if you have these kind of thing where you you cannot define your factorial, so there you will have to write. I'll write it here. Then, uh, Laplace transform of t to the power n in general would be equals to gamma of n plus one divided by s to the power n plus one. So gamma of n plus one will be gamma of one minus half. That is gamma of half. What is gamma half? Gamma of is root over pi, and this is s to the power. Minus half plus one. This is root over s, and then you also have to replace s by s plus. One. So this is what. Now is that clear? Okay. So this is called as uh, this is called as Laplace transform of some peculiar functions. These are called as error functions, and mostly they are not employed in your physics. Uh, mostly they are employed in physics, but uh, I'm not very sure right now as to कहाँ से इसको हम देखेंगे but in mathematics they are quite useful when we take a step when we consider statistics. Okay now if you if I want to uh, ask you this particular question how to go about it so just one question so that and then we'll see most more questions tomorrow but. Uh, mostly, uh, I'll, I'll consider finishing this topic tomorrow. Okay, uh, let me do a few more questions for you. Take control. Just try to do one question, which I think should be from Laplace transform, especially from error function. I want to give you. So, what would be the? Let's uh, see. If the question should be answered, the question should be uh, find me the Laplace. Find me this integration zero to infinity t. e की पावर माइनस टी स्क्वायर एरर फंक्शन टी डी टी सो दिस इज टी इंटू ई की पावर माइनस टी स्क्वायर एरर फंक्शन टी डी टी सो सी व्हाट आई डू आई प्लेस माय टी स्क्वायर इक्वल टू बाय जस्ट पुट टी स्क्वायर इक्वल टू बाय सो व्हाट यू विल गेट यू विल गेट इंटीग्रेशन फ्रॉम जीरो टू इनफिनिटी ओनली एंड हियर यू विल गेट आई थिंक ई की पावर माइनस ऑफ Y and instead of t, you can write root over y, and then error function of root over y, and this is t. Okay. 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 Okay.
uh, not dy, dy any okay. You have a one upon two root over by dy. Is that clear? Look, uh, uh, dt is equal to dt is equal to dt is equal to uh, one upon two root over by dt. Is that clear? Now you see uh, this root over y gets cancelled with this root over y. So eventually you are left with integration from zero to infinity e key power minus y error function of root over y d y right and it is equal to what it is equal to simply laplace transform of error function root over y with s equals to 1. So e key power minus s y ki jage yaha pe kya e key power minus y hai na? So e key power minus s y ki jage yaha par kya e key power minus y hai? Matlab s ki jage kya lina padega 1. So now what was error function? Uh, Laplace transform of error function kya tha? Uh, Laplace transform of error function of root over t kya tha? 1 upon I think it was some s into root over kya tha? Upar abhi bhi likha na? Okay. S into root over s plus. So ye tha s into root over S plus one. But if one upon two be to be chaw, so one upon two yali. So this one upon two. So this will come out as one upon two into one into root over. So answer should be. Is that clear? So exam in nahi aega mostly, I believe. Look, exam me to nahi aasa kya aisa chiz hai. But if it comes, then uh, because uh, if it comes in exam, they then they will have to define you the error function. Because not many uh, people in mathematics or uh, physics would want to know this particular function. Try to find me the Laplace transform of this function. What would be the Laplace transform of e key power minus t square power? What would be the Laplace transform of e key power minus t square power? What would be the Laplace transform of e key power minus t square by 4? So it would be equal to what? I should write it here. It would be equal to integration 0 to infinity e key power minus st into e key power minus t squared by 4 dt. And this I'll write 0 to infinity e key power uh, minus of s plus uh, t by 2 ka whole square dt. And then I will write e key power of s square upon not s square upon 4. Nee, uh, simply I think s square. So e key power s square bar kar dete. I'll write e key power s square outside of this repeat. So 0 to infinity e key power minus s by hai, s plus t by 2 per whole square dt. Ye ho na, e key power minus t square yaan to kuma. So yaan pe kya if s square extra, you can minus s square extra, you can multiply s square and multiply it. And what will happen inside? t square by 4 will be minus and one will be plus. Okay, now let's take a look at this. Let s plus, okay, this is like uh, Laplace transform of e key power minus t square is equal to this. And it is equal to e key power of s square. But s plus t by 2, you can do x. What will happen? At t equal to 0, where x was equal to s, and at t equals to infinity, your x is equal to infinity. So e key power minus of x square, and this is equal to, I think, dx by 2. If I'm not wrong, dx by 2, I'm going uh, uh, 2 dx, I'm say 2 dx, sorry. So it should come as 2 dx. Okay, because uh, dt will be equal to what it will be equal to 2 times x. Is that clear? Because integration is going over t, so variable is t, and uh, instead s plus t by 2, I am replacing it by x. So uh, dt by 2 should be equal to dx, so your dt would be equal to twice dx. So this is your Laplace transform of e key power of minus t square by 4. So what it, it would be equal to, it would be equal to 2 times e key power minus s square, and it is equal to s infinity e key power of minus x square x. s to infinity e key power minus x square dx. Is that clear? And if you remember, one thing I told you, what is error function complementary t 
error function complementary if you remember it is equal to 2 upon uh, sorry it is equal to 2 upon root pi integration from t to infinity e key power minus of z square dz if you remember this so if on uh, if you remember this then you can write this entire thing in terms of the error function also so if you remember this then you can write these things in terms of your error function as well. so what i'll do i'll simply multiply and divide by 2 upon root over pi so i'll multiply it, this entire thing by root over pi i'll multiply this entire thing by root over pi here so this is equal to root over pi e to the power s square and 2 upon root pi integration from s to infinity e to the power minus s square this is your error function complementary i think i think this would be s if i'm not okay so root over pi e to the power s square error function complementary s this is it so this is how you are going to write. now just try to give me answer to one of the question i think that would be a good question to ask at right now since i have done inverse laplace transforms for you so let me do few questions on inverse laplace transform Questions on inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so questions on inverse Laplace transform. Uh, a few questions I'll give, and then try to find the inverse Laplace transform of what inverse is, and we'll uh, continue this thing tomorrow also. But just uh, initially, just try to find what would be the Laplace inverse of what inverse of this. What would be the Laplace inverse of what inverse of this? What would be the Laplace inverse of what inverse of this? So you clearly know that uh, no such function till now uh, you you know whose uh, Laplace transform would come as cot inverses, right? Till now you do not know any function whose Laplace transform is equal to cot inverses. So what is better to do? Try to differentiate it. Try to differentiate. So you don't know as such. Abhi to koi bhi function padha the jiska Laplace transform cot inverse is kara nahi. So you have to find Laplace inverse of cot inverse of s. So instead, what I'll do, I'll use one property. So Laplace transform of f f, f uh, sorry if f s is your Laplace transform of f t, then f dash s is the Laplace transform of minus t f of t. So it, what would be Laplace inverse of f dash s? It would be equal to minus of t into f of t. Okay, so this is how you do. So what is the derivative of cot inverse x? It is equal to minus one upon one plus s square. So Laplace inverse of this would be equal to minus of t into f of t. And what is f of t? F of t is the Laplace inverse of cot inverse of x. Okay, and uh, so what, what would be this? I think this would be equal to sine so minus sin t is equal to minus t f t so your f t should be equal to what your f t should be equal to sin t upon t is that clear or not clear okay okay so um, we'll meet tomorrow and tomorrow pro probably name tomorrow is the last date for laplace transform and then from day after we'll start with fourier transforms so at least these two things will get over and then probably we may start with matrices so that we are not close to uh, and then probably probability and uh, statistics also before starting your uh, quantum mechanics so at least these topics are done then things will be easy for us to follow okay sir.